Hey everyone, it's Peter with The Garden Family. It's December 10th and I am down in our seed starting area. I'm gonna take you on a little tour of our seed starting area, what equipment we like, and a piece of equipment that we wasted a lot of money on. So let's go check it out. We use this unfinished portion of our basement for seed starting. This area is about 15 by 20 feet and we're using maybe two thirds of it. I should note that most of the basement is finished and it does have central heat and air conditioning. So it stays about 70 degrees Fahrenheit year round. As far as utility tables, I really like these stainless steel restaurant style tables because they're perfectly fine if they get wet, they're super easy to clean. And if we ever transition our seed starting area to let's say a greenhouse or an outbuilding, we can just take them with us. As a side note, as I talk about products, I'll include links down in the description. We don't have any affiliations with any of the products and don't make any money off any of the links that we have down below. They're just things that we have bought that have worked for us. This island table is 30 by 72 inches and it's just a plain table with this undermount area. And then behind me, I have two of the same size tables, 30 by 72 inches, but they have a little backsplash. So as I'm watering, water won't go behind the tables. The tables come with normal legs, but I am six foot two and I like them to be just a little bit higher. So I bought the casters, the wheels that go with the tables and that increases the height a little bit. So that way I can be working here and not have to bend over. Overall, I really like the tables. I'd buy them again. They are a little expensive. I think they're somewhere near $300 per table, but they should last forever. And like I mentioned before, we can move them to another location if we need to. The alternative would be to just build your own tables. You'll probably save a decent amount of money, but just lose out a little bit on cleansability and portability. So let's talk about lighting next probably the most important topic when deciding on what to buy for your seed starting area. It's also the thing that we wasted the most money on. So a big mistake we made that we don't want you to make is we bought this fluorescent light rack right behind me. So this is an all-inclusive package. It comes with the rack and the 1020 trays. It holds 16 of them as well as fluorescent lights that go over each tray. It's really well made and it's very compact. You can hold a lot of seedlings in one small area. It was also pretty expensive at $1,300 with shipping. We bought it from Johnny Seeds. Now I absolutely love Johnny's as a company. We buy probably the majority of our seeds from them. The real issue is just that this is outdated technology. We bought the seed starting rack uh, fall of last year, just as we were moving into the property. We had a lot going on. It was very expensive, but I thought, hey, I don't wanna miss a season. I'm just gonna get something. I don't have time to build anything or put anything together. And at the same time, I decided to also try one of the newer high powered LEDs. So these two lights right here are the newer high powered LED lights. We bought one of them last fall to give them a try and they absolutely performed so much better than the traditional fluorescent lights that we really regret buying the fluorescent rack. The ones we bought are the Vipar Spectra XS4000. I'm not positive I have that right, but I will put the correct one in the description down below. And they're relatively large lights that light up a pretty big area. One light will light up the entirety of this six foot long table. And what I notice with the seedlings between them in the fluorescent lights in comparison to the LED lights, the seedlings in the fluorescent lights, they were just sort of staying alive. They really felt like indoor plants just kind of limping along until you could get them outdoors where they would, could thrive. Whereas the LED lights, they were really thriving indoors. My pepper plants were so large and robust and healthy. They were already putting on fruit inside. I had peppers super early in June, I believe. I had full on pepper production because the plants themselves were just so much farther along in development 
than what I had experienced in the past with the fluorescent lights. So we liked this one so much we got a second one and in retrospect I really would have loved to have saved the money on that fluorescent rack because these are expensive. I think they were about $370 each but the two of these and the two tables cost less than that entire rack behind me. So if you haven't bought lights yet, I definitely would go for some sort of high powered LED. I do think you get what you pay for. You are gonna see some relatively inexpensive LED lights, but I think the more expensive ones definitely work well. I haven't lost any diodes on this one, but I've only used it for a year. So hopefully it will last a long time and I'll get my money in investment with all the great plants that we're gonna grow underneath it. One last thing that I really like about the LEDs is with the fluorescence, you have to keep the light so close to the plants because the light output is very low. Whereas these are 30 inches away from the table. And so I can water and manage and inspect all my plants and just keep them on the table. Um, with the fluorescence, I have to take each tray out individually because there's just no room underneath the lights in order to water and manage the plants. So other things you're gonna want for a seed starting room, one of those is a heat mat. A lot of the seeds do a lot better if they are started with bottom heat. I've had this uh, one that's 10 by 20 inches for a while, it works great, but I recently bought this 48 by 20 inch one and what's nice is it came with a temperature controller so you can set the temperature range for the seeds depending on their ideal germination temperature one of the things i like about these tables is they have this under mount rack and since most seeds don't require light for germination i just keep this down here and then i can start my seeds these are some basil that we're just going to grow um, over the winter for cooking with so another thing you're gonna want is some sort of fan for airflow. We're in a basement, we have no windows here, and plants really do require some airflow to prevent disease and also to strengthen their stalks by getting hit with a little bit of wind. A lot of people will use small fans that they clip to their seedling racks, but in our area, we have sort of a big space and I use these large open tables to start my seedlings underneath the LED lights. And so what I found, works really well is just a larger oscillating fan and this is just a Amazon basics one they're super cheap it's actually much less expensive to have a larger fan that's fanning the whole room than multiple smaller fans all right let's talk about trays now so you're gonna need a few things one are these industry standard size 10 20 trays and then obviously you're gonna need something to pot up your plants in and then I have a special thing I always use what, during the initial seed starting, I'll show you in just a second. So 10, 20 trays, as far as which ones to buy, I would recommend just buying the more expensive, thicker plastic versions of these, because you're gonna reuse these over and over again, um, multiple years in a row. And I have opposite advice for these smaller planting trays first thing when you're buying these you should just make sure that they fit well in the 1020 trays that there's not sort of a half uh, containers width there i personally like the cheap versions of these the reason is i've bought expensive ones in the past and i'm just not that great with them you bring them out to plant your seedlings i've left them out the lawn mowers run over them before and also I had one time in Fresno, California when it was really hot and they warped in the sun. So for that reason, I just buy a large pack of these. Uh, I'll include a link of the ones I bought in the description. And that way, if I trash one or forget about it, I can just throw it away, I don't really mind. Now the last thing about uh, these seed starting trays that I really, really like are these to-go containers with clear plastic lids. 
So if you wanna be resourceful, you can save any sort of clear plastic container um, and use that, let's say a rotisserie chicken container. But I just bought a large amount of them. One of the things that's tough when saving containers, whether it's these to-go type containers or um, if you're saving small containers for plants is they're harder to store if they're various sizes. They don't really inset into each other, whereas I can have a lot of these all in one small area because they're all the same size. So I use these to start pretty much all of my seeds. I place moist potting soil in here, place my seeds in there and a label, cover it up, place it on a heat mat if needed, and I do not water it again. Once they're germinated and uh, have a little bit of size to them, I then prick them out and put them into their appropriate containers. Seed starting is a whole nother topic, however, so if you want me to make a more detailed video of how I actually start my seeds, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll work on it this spring. All right, last few things that are essential for seed starting. One, super simple, but you're definitely gonna need labels and a good pen that doesn't wash away with water. We all think we're gonna remember what we planted without labeling it, and we never do. So label everything you plant, you won't regret it. You're gonna need a seed starting mix, and if you buy an actual seed starting mix from a big box store, you don't get very much. If you have a small garden, that will probably be fine, but it does cost a lot for the volume that you get. I actually really like the this um, Pro Mix variety. Um, it comes in these compressed bales, but they're, you, get, you get a lot for how big it is. And it is a peat-based product. I know there is some qualms with that, but it's still my go-to as far as seed starting. The main thing is you shouldn't use just soil from outside as you are much more likely to have diseases on your seedlings that you'll bring into your seed starting room. And the last minor thing that you will want to have is some way to store and categorize your seeds. I really like these photo organizers. They come with multiple of these um, four by six containers and they fit um, seeds super well. Um, the way I organize these is I place the seed packets um, by the, the date that I'm going to start them. That way in January, I'm just gonna grab this box to start my onions and my pansies, etc. If I do a seed starting video, I will go into more detail about how I organize these. Hopefully that quick rundown of how we set up our seed starting room was helpful. If you got something out of the video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content and want to see more of it, go ahead and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. As always, I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments below. Happy gardening, everyone.